Hey everyone, well, welcome to this week's episode. For this week I want to share how you can add sort of colors to your painting from black and white. I did a painting inspired by one of Makoto Shinkai's movies called 5 centimeters per second. This is the last image in the sort of mini series I did dedicated to his movies. Uh, and I had to rewatch the movie because it was a long time ago since I watched it so I would need to refresh my memory. And there's a particular moment in the movie where it's sort of an emotional moment for all the characters and at the same time a rocket gets launched up into space. And it creates such a cool contrast and it's such a beautiful thing that I sort of wanted to take that and do my interpretation based off of that. I looked at a lot of space rocket launches and a lot of inspiration to the cover of the movie itself because I thought it's really beautiful. And I sort of combined all these things and sort of made my own take on it. And that was the sort of illustration for this episode. And I also ran into some happy accidents along the way which I want to share as well with you. But let's jump into it, shall we? I'll see you in a moment. So before I jump into the painting itself, I sort of want to run over the bl different blending modes I'm using to add colors to the black and white image. And since I was starting from a black and white state, being able to know what different color setting does to your color is super helpful because then it allows you to really manipulate it in the way that you desire. And as you can see, I have the blue at the top right and each one of these squares has a different blending setting. And every time I place the color with a different blending setting, you can see even though the value, the gray is the same, how differently it gets affected based on the different setting we have. And if you're familiar with these, you can really use it to your advantage. If you feel like you're not so familiar with it, play around with it and you're gonna be able to find ways of using it to your own benefit. But let's start adding colors. So the first layer setting I'm probably going to use is going to be the color layer mode because one thing I really like about that is it tends to not mess around with your values because sometimes if you use for instance overlay, color dodge or multiply it's really going to change your values either for a brighter or a darker version and what color does is it sort of ignores everything and it just keeps it exactly the way you have and it just gives you a color on top of it which I think is a pretty good start um, and because of that I like to start my black and white images in a pretty neutral state because if you look at the early versions of it there's no real really really dark areas there's some darker values but there's also no real bright bright areas except maybe the rocket in the distance and I try to limit it as much as possible because I know that I'm going to use overlay and multiply later on I sort of want to use that to push it beyond uh, what my original black and white is because if, if for me I found that if you start too early with too many darks and too many brights and you try to add color on top of it it sort of gets a really weird look to it and it's hard to sort of reverse the effect so if you start with a more neutral state with your values, it's easier to add the colors in. And it's sort of a slow build up adding the colors step by step. I don't want to rush it too much because I think that's one thing whenever you add color to black and white, you sort of need to add several layers of colors and be careful not moving the image too fast. One thing I also want to point out, if you see in the top right corner, I sort of have a square of blue. And I do this whenever I start an image from black and white and the square blue is what I like to think as a pure color that I add to the image. By adding this, it gives me something to compare to because I notice that whenever I started images uh, without this, you th I always felt like I had much more color than I did, but they were really desaturated. So having that at the top of the corner, I keep it pretty much towards the end of the process. It always gives me something to check myself and compare to, and you just create a separate layer and then you can just turn it off. And as I'm working on this image, I realized the ground is super noisy. I tried adding color to it, but it just felt really wrong. I sort of wanted to have a bit of a concrete texture. So I tried to paint it myself and I sort of stretched it out over this thing, but it just didn't feel right. So I thought I was gonna, rather than trying to adjust it with color, since we're trying to do this image in black and white, it would be easy. I just turned off the color layers on top that I added and I went in in black and white and started repainting it and started adding new colors on top of it. And I felt like this version with the ground feels a lot better as well. It's not as noisy as the previous one and it helps with the perspective. Because we lost a bit of it in the previous one because of all the noisy dots. I thought it was going to give a more feel of concrete or asphalt but it just wasn't working. <laughs> 
And I'm also adding more contrast to the girl as well. I want to make sure she matches in. Usually like whenever I do my paintings, I try to leave the character for last, but it's important to make sure the image feels cohesive. I added the character in early and I'm trying to color everything at the same time because I noticed whenever you start in black and white, there are, if you add things later on, it's harder to make it feel like it matches the rest of the image. So trying to do everything at once, uh, I think is a good idea. And also whenever you add colors to a black and white image, there's so many ways you can go about it. These are just some approaches you can think about when you add colors to yours. And also some people finish it completely by maybe they push them black and white even further. Maybe they do add much more contrast and darkness and light. Uh, and then they just add color and wrap it up. But for me, I feel like I need to push the image to a certain state. Uh, and then I add the black and white colors on top of it. And then eventually as the final touches, that's when I go in and paint things manually. Because I feel like trying to add everything through just color on top of black and white, is really hard. And unless you push the black and white really far, it, it's a really hard balance to hit. Um, I was also trying to, because we have the lights in the distance, so I tried to create some lights here that I was going to merge into perspective, but I ended up uh, tweaking it several times because you're going to see like I, tr I was really trying to make it work um, and just having that feel of light hitting some highlights on the asphalt. But I was pretty tired when I did this and the next day when I woke up I was like, okay, this looks really weird. <laughs> so I ended up getting rid of a lot of it in the end. But you're gonna see me work through it quite a bit before I realized the day after like, okay, this totally didn't work. And I think that's something like, it's kind of nice whenever you're working on an image that, you know, you work on it, but as you work on an image, you sort of get stuck in a tunnel vision. And taking a step away, going to bed and looking at the image the next day, you can see things that stands out a lot to you then that you might have missed before. So it's always good to like double check yourself, you know, take a break uh, and just come back to it. And as I was working on this image, I was sort of moving around some layers and I accidentally unticked the layer for the character and it created a really cool effect in the image. That was sort of the happy accident I was mentioning, like, because I realized the image probably had too much contrast and by playing around with this layer where there's a bit more a muted colors and like I start clamped all the values together more I could bring more focus to the rocket itself and I really liked it so I thought of this as a, like a final touch I can do to the painting so I created a separate layer group for this called final edit um, and I always like to do with my paintings like I have a separate layer uh, or a few separate layers where I sort of do the final touches to a painting um, and leave them to the very end and if I do need to do final touches of painting I'll go on top of that but that's one of the fun thing with digital work, you know, sometimes you just misclick and something unexpected happens. Uh, and it's really fun when that happens. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen the movie yet, be sure to check it out. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching the episode. I hope you enjoyed the Makoto Shinkai series I did. Uh, if you haven't seen them before, I'll put a link in the description below. This was the last one in the mini series. Uh, there was a lot of requests to watch Weathering with you and do a painting for that. I just couldn't find the time to watch it before making this episode, but I'm sure there'll be a special episode coming up in the future. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series and have a wonderful weekend and have fun painting. Have a good one. Bye.